So we've talked about alpha beta pruning. We walked through a few examples, but you know, you're computer scientists, and this is probably because you need a grade uh, that you're like, give me, I, I, how do I build this? I need to build this in my language. Uh, well, I'm not going to just build it for you, but I will at least point you in the direction of uh, a Swan, uh, what is it? Swarthmore College. Uh, I really like this uh, link in the description below, but I really like their pseudo code because it helped even me sort of kind of really wrap my brain about this. So what we're looking at here is specifically when we're dealing with alpha beta minimaxing, right? We're dealing with a function or method, you know, again, your language of choice, but specifically looking at all of these different actions, uh, you know, these different sort of categories of what's going on along the way might help sort of give you some kind of guidance on what we're dealing with here. So at least to start, one of the things that they're sort of touching on is this notion of having some kind of depth limit. Again, if you remember, while I was working off of a simple tic-tac-toe board, if you're dealing with a situ you know, a, a game or a search that is much deeper, connect four, connect, uh, chess, uh, checkers, you're going to have way too many potential moves. And so it is going to be beneficial to work off of some kind of depth limit. My recommendation, you know, I would set a, a initial depth level to something like maybe uh, five and build from there. If you end up losing, you know, increase it. If you, you know, crash because of uh, stack overflows, decrease it. But either way, the next little portion here is specifically a static eval method that uh, they sort of leave open-ended. And I also, in my assignment, am leaving it open-ended. The notion is uh, how good is this node? Because remember, right now what we're saying is uh, we're sort of treating this like it's a terminal state, even though it's not. And so we're saying, okay, well, what, you know, can you give me a, heuristic of how well we're doing. And so this is where, you know, oh, you know, we talked about heuristics with, you know, a star search, the same thing is going on here, you need to give me some kind of heuristic that says whether or not this is a good state. For example, uh, one of the assignments that I've presented to my students is connect four. Well, connect four, just to draw that out a little bit, I think that's right. Uh, connect four, you could think that, uh, and I won't change colors, I'll just use X's and O's for, for this. You know, if I dropped a position, one more column, if I dropped a position here, and then, uh, you know, the other player dropped their position, uh, I drop one here, they drop one here, I drop one here, they drop one here. So at least in this sake, right, is this a good move? Like, is this column good? Or is this column better? And, you know, one heuristic that you could work off of is how many of your nodes are connected together. Now, in this sense, both of those are still going to be good possible routes, but you could expand on that. You know, how many connect threes do I have? How many connect twos do I have? And then try and build out some kind of weighting system. So connect threes are better uh, if I have connect threes or vice versa. Either way. This is up to you to build on your own end and explore and play with. But then we also have our terminal states. So our terminal states. Terminal states. Here, what we're looking at is again, we're going to see if uh, any potential child, this is sort of what are all my possible children, uh, and then really this goes down to here. If I have no more children, oh well, what are we looking at? Well, the first thing we're dealing with here is what if we're at the very beginning? Uh, and so at this state, uh, initialize, initialize best move. Now, not really initialize, more like reset initial move. One of the things I would recommend is you could create some type of class variable for best 
move, right? And as you do your search, that changes along the way. That might work out that way. But again, you notice it's doing that same kind of thing of a static eval. Well, that heuristic is also coming into play. Even though we're at a leaf node and you can actually evaluate the actual value, uh, again, this is just your method of, oh, well, since we're at a leaf, is this a good leaf? Is this a bad leaf? Okay. So then we're dealing with this is where that resetting of our best move also happens. So again, if I'm at the root node, so again, if I'm looking at that connect for gain, right? What I'm essentially saying is, is this node equal to root? Is it this blank slate? Uh, again, uh, just to help out my students dealing with connect for, again, if I have a blank board, and I know this is just not right in connect for, uh, I think I have too many columns this time right is my node the current node that i'm evaluating equal to a blank board now specifically i'm actually going to erase this notion of it being blank because what happens when i'm doing the search at this state all right well again it's uh is it equal to what the board currently is the current board is actually a better notion of what we're looking at here. Because again, we're starting off at the very beginning. So we're just gonna go ahead and say, uh, what is the first move? Now, specifically, this is where Swarthmore and my assignment and your assignment may differ because they're using this word operator. Well, they're, they're doing some weird, uh, I think it was uh, Hawaiian checkers. And so operator is not really the best sort of notion for this, uh, best, action of the first child, the best move. If I was dealing with connect four, again, uh, that would be our column. If I was dealing with chess, it would be again, what piece am I moving? If it's checkers, it's what piece am I moving, etc. Either way, again, uh, if there's no other options, then we'll just go ahead and return null, none, whatever. But the big thing here is, again, we're setting up best move. And because of that, we now have sort of our, our notion of, oh, well, this is going to at least be my best move if I just took the leftmost path every single time. Okay. Then now we're starting to get into minning and maxing. Now, you need to track whose turn it is. And there are a number of different ways you could do that. You may have maybe some class variable of turn, right? And that controls if it's Max's turn or Min's turn. And one of the things that you'd need to do is uh, sort of when you drop down, you, you maybe flip uh, turn is now equal to the negation of turn. Again, that's mostly if we're thinking about this from just like a, a back and forth uh, two player game. Uh, but that's sort of, again, tracking whose turn it is. Either way, you can see that what we're doing here is, again, if we are in a max move, so we are in max move, then we have to get all of our potential children. What are all the possible moves that I could make in my board right now? So what are all the possible moves? right now and specifically again the notion what we're looking at is what if i'm planning this is sort of my actual state so actual board then what happens if i've been planning occasionally i've made a few moves i'm here then here this is my perceived state so what we're looking at when we're thinking about children is when we think about right now, we're looking at this from perception. If I'm at this perceived state, what are all my possible moves? But then you can see we do some uh, alpha, beta, mini maxing. Now, one thing I have made as a suggestion, 
sort of when we deal with our depth limit is it may be helpful to actually just have depth be right here. You know, just expand on their pseudocode and track depth along the way. Then as you come over to make a call, instead of this being, uh, uh, let me actually use a, I will whiten that out. Instead of this being, where are you? There you are. Instead of that being the end of my, my method call, right? What if I came in and said, oh, well now depth is going plus one. And then you can see, oh, well, I would be tracking depth as I go down my moves. Either way, again, when we hit recursive or we hit those terminal states, we're doing returns of static evals. We're returning some kind of int or uh, double or floating point number. So again, that's the only thing that we are returning in the search, not in the best move. That's something else. So again, as we're going through this, we get some kind of value. And if that value turns out to be better than alpha, because again, alpha is tracking our max, we wanna maximize alpha when we're in a max node, then we update alpha. And notice again, what we're looking at here is this notion of what the best move happens to be. Once again, operator is action. What is the action that you need to take? Because we probably want to rec you know, record that. And finally, you notice one of the things we're doing is the pruning method. So if we see that we have run into a situation where alpha turns out to be uh, larger uh, than beta, stop, right? That's something we don't need to search anymore. We're already done. And then we do the same thing for men's turn. So same kind of thing. Again, if you're tracking turn, if turn, I don't know, equals negative one, uh, then congratulations, you now know you're in a, a min turn. You're still doing the same perception. So moves at perceived state. And you're still doing alpha, beta, mini maxing. You're still doing the, uh, you know, depth plus one here. So all that's still happening. Notice again, we're still tracking uh, rather than uh, if alpha is uh, a result is greater than alpha, we're looking if it's smaller than beta. If that is the case, we can change it. Uh, and same thing, this may still also be the best move that we can get. You know, Again, this is more in that sense of uh, we do have to evaluate that because it may be the best we can get out of our situation. But then we're still in that same alpha uh, greater than or equal to beta approach here. Uh, and then once again, as you can see, uh, we would be returning beta in our sort of traversal of our tree. So you'd go through and back and forth of these different situations. And so again, the big things that I see from sort of students is where am I tracking these different things? Again, I recommend that best move if you have a class make it a class variable and update as you need. Uh, then, uh, same kind of thing when we're dealing with depth, uh, uh, use depth as another parameter. Now again, depending on your instructor, how your course is designed out, you may not be allowed to, but again, if that's the case, uh, What do you know? Make it a class variable as well. Uh, and so you, again, keep working through this. Uh, the bigger things I see a lot of times is this uh, notion of perceived states. And so one of the things you will need to do is you will need to sort of create a copy of whatever your current state is. So uh, to make a perceived state, to make a perceived state, make 
a copy of your current state. Again, because of that, think current state also with the perception. Because again, the actual board may just look like this. Again, just the blank tic-tac-toe board. It may work off of that, but if I create a duplication of that, I can work off of that. I could drop a piece. I could you know, place a piece, again, just how you're thinking about your moves. And then that would allow me to make, again, because I have a cloned copy of the current state, I have a perceived. I can manipulate the perceived and I can do static evals on the perceived state. So hopefully this again works through this. Uh, the link for the Swarthmore College uh, pseudocode will be in the description. I don't control Swarthmore, so hopefully it stays. Uh, but again, this is my sort of if you want to start tackling alpha beta mini vaccine, uh, try to work through these steps. And this might help, again, uh, build things out for you and plan things out. And you may feel froggy and do things like Negamax or something else along the way. But with that, you know, whatever your assignment is, uh, leave, you know, uh, do a, do the YouTube thing of leave a comment in the in the, the comments down below. Tell me what you had to do. Uh, in your class to do alpha beta pruning. That way I can duplicate it and copy it and make it for my students.